Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tissim for those that are new here. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing about my experience getting a Nigerian international passport, a fresh passport for an infant. I got this at the Nigerian High Commission, Thumberland Avenue, London, England. And I live in Scotland, Glasgow. So yeah, I'm smiling now, but my experience is one that is worthy of sharing. So if you'd like to know how to get a passport for your infants, I think this video would be a good watch. So if you'd like to know more, definitely keep watching. Now, before I go on, please note that this video and anything that I say is subject to change in the sense of with any system, Nigeria and the UK government, things always change. The laws may change, the procedures may change. So please, at the time of this video, this video is being filmed December 1st, 2021. Things might have changed. The application was done November 17th. 2021 so i think about two weeks ago that was what, three weeks ago that's when the application was done so as i said things might have changed so um i just need to put the disclaimer out there so no one comes to come and meet me and say but you said this things change and especially with nigerian government that is so volatile please expect that this the information that i'm providing here might not be accurate at the time that you're pursuing your own application for your child so without further ado again let's get right into the video Okay, so the first thing that I want you to do is first to prepare your mind, prepare your heart. I have been to the Nigerian house or the Nigeria house, there's no end, the Nigeria house, which I'm going to come to later, a couple of times. I've had to renew my passport, I think, about three times in the UK since I've been here. So, I've been there. So, I already know the drill. I actually wrote a blog post on my blog then, eight years ago. So, I would say 2013, and a lot of things are still the same, strangely. But yeah. This one, I decided to go to apply for my daughter who was born a year and a half ago. She's going to be a year and six months by December. So I needed to get a Nigerian passport for her. And I say need, I did not actually need to. There's no need for right now. But I just wanted to get it and get it out of the way. Also, I wanted to kill two birds with one stone. I wanted to go see my friends as well in London. Because since I've had my baby, I haven't done anything for myself. So I tried to use the opportunity to go see my friends and also renew the Nigerian passport. Now, the first thing that I said that I want you to have in your mind is obviously just prepare yourself for the experience. You might go and you might not experience anything that I said, but you also might go and you might experience even worse than I mentioned. So the first thing that you want to do is to go on the Nigerian government website. I'm going to put the link in the description box of this video. A lot of people always ask where is the description box. If you're watching on your TV, you would not see it. If you're watching on your phone, just scroll up, you'll see it beneath. I think YouTube now, they now put it by the side. So it should be only on this side or on this side. And then you'll have to cancel it. That's the description box of the video. If you're watching via laptop, just scroll down. You'll also see it. You go on the website and you want to navigate to passports. I'm going to try and put a screen recording as well as I'm talking on the video. And that should help you to fill the form. So make sure that you have all your child's details. It's a fresh Nigerian passport, but this is a second passport that's going to make her a dual or what they call it, a dual citizen of two different countries, right? Yeah, a dual citizen. That's what's going to make her that. So you're going to need all your child's information if it's a first passport, or perhaps it's even you that wants a fresh passport. Let me say you've been British all your life and you've never had any reason to go to Nigeria and you think maybe the visa fees are very expensive. A passport is a good way to save cost on the long run. Yeah, so you want to go on the, on the website, which I'm going to put in the description box below, not on the screen, and you're going to fill the form. Now, once you go on the website, before you start to fill the form, I suggest that you have a printer at home. Do not do this if you do not have access to a printer immediately. Please and please and please. I know that you'll be like, oh, you can just save as PDF and print later. But trust me, it takes a lot of stress off your back if as you're just downloading the document or the page says, make sure you print. They have some funny cues on the website that we'll probably get to it as we're going on the video. You need to print. You want to put their date of birth, everything. You want to check with their current UK passport or their birth certificates so that you don't make any spelling mistakes. Trust me, the last thing that you want is any typo errors. So you want to ensure that that's done. Now, there's a part on the form that it's a bit archaic. It actually talks about the it talks about their residential address. Since you're applying from the UK, you would assume that it's going to be your UK address, but the only country listed there is Nigeria. So they believe that if you're claiming that you're of Nigerian descent and you're a Nigerian and you're entitled to a Nigerian passport, you need to have a Nigerian residential address. So in that place, I put my father's address in Nigeria, my parents' home in Nigeria. 
I think also they also ask for state of origin, where you're for, from. So I put my state of origin, my daughter's state of origin, that's my husband's state of origin, also her um, her town and the local government. I think that was asked. Another question that I think that you may find a bit difficult also is like maybe local government area. So if you don't know, perhaps you need to ask and find out from a child's father, which I'm still coming to why I said the child's father or even child's mother. I don't know what the laws are for single parents. But speaking from my own experience being married and applying with my husband for my child, right? So that's that. Then also you might also need to know the child's height. So I had to get a tape roll in the house and I measured her myself and I think I had to put the measurements in centimeters. So if you're maybe your mid your tape roll is in meters, you obviously want to change it centimeters or inches or whatever it is and then you want to put it on the website. Also our eye color and all of that information, you want to fill the form. So now when you're done filling the forms, you need to print that. Now it's going to take you to another website, also via that link where you need to go and register to pay so that you guys can go and do your biometric at the Nigerian, like the Nigeria High Commission. Now when you go on that place, if you're applying for just your child, you will need to pay. So you also put in the details, you put in your form, you add everything to cards. I think it's called Innovate Services at the time of this video. I'll also put the link in the description box below. You never know, it might change, they might change their payment provider. I could not check out. Now this is my own experience. When I put all the um, her details and everything and they, they brought the bill and the cost, I'll put the cost on the screen here. It was in dollars. I don't know why, but it was in dollars. I could not check out with my card. Now, there is a clause on the website that you need to read. And also, please, if you're dealing with these people or with anything, reading is such a skill. You will need to carefully read all information so that you don't shoot yourself in the foot on that day. Now, there's going to be a clause on the website that says, the name of the applicant must match the name of the debit card using to pay. So my daughter's name and her last name must be the same name and last name on the debit card. Not the last name alone, the first name and the last name. Which I found really weird because my daughter is an infant. She has a bank account but she doesn't have a credit card or debit card to check out transactions. And I wasn't applying with her. If two of you are doing an application at the same time, you would be able to check out because one of you's name matches the, the, the card um, details so it would let you check out but if you're doing it by yourself or for your daughter alone or for your son alone you would not be able to check out so what I had to do was I had to register my credit card so at the top part of the website you will see a place that says register your credit card so they're going to ask you to fill a form you put in your card details and then you submit evidence that the card is yours e.g. your passport page, your passport data page, maybe your driver's license, your professional, professional driver's license and also your bank statement that shows that you are the owner of the, of the, of the card. Now this is to prevent, prevent fraud. I don't know why but this is to prevent fraud. Now they also put a clause in that any sensitive information in your bank statement, so things like your last four digits of your account, please block it out using a photo editing app. I use a MacBook so it was very easy for me to annotate. So I just put like squares on all the important details. I actually checked out with my husband's card. So I just got his bank statement and I blocked out everything. And I also put his data page of his passport. I just thought it was easier because I haven't changed my name. But my daughter and my husband have the same name. And I haven't changed my name because I don't want to have to go to Abuja to go and change my Nigerian passport when I'm not going to Nigeria for any reason. It's such a long process. So I decided to do it when I am in Nigeria, whenever I decide to go to Nigeria. So that's one of the reasons. I don't even know I'm even telling you guys this part. But anyway, let me carry on. So I was able to submit. Now the website says that once you submit the details, they will get back to you in two working days. I tried to submit this thing a couple of times. It just wouldn't go through. I decided to read very carefully line by line. And I realized that the file size, it was actually in the fine print that I was uploading. Like the scanned page of the password was too large. So I had to reduce it to a certain MB which is written on the website, the, the file site, and then I re-uploaded it and it went through. I think I submitted on a Sunday, on a Tuesday morning, I was given a mail that my card has been approved. So I was able to check out immediately and print. And it's going to tell you, it's going to tell you as soon as you finish um, paying, it's going to say print page. So it, there are four documents you need to print. You need to print your application form. 
you need to print your acknowledgement slip <laughs> slip s l i p i'm going to put all the documents you need also in the description box you also need to print your payment receipt slip then you also need to print a letter that you would type up with your husband saying i let me say your name is janice take them jacob i janice jacob and johnson jacob i mean you and your husband you know attest that this child jennifer jacob is our child and we attest to her you i'll put the template of the one that i used so that it can help you to aid your letter writing i'll see if i can split screen and i'm going to put it there obviously i'll block out i won't i'll put like dashes where your name would be and you can just use this template and then you need to print it out i need to sign and have your husband also sign i think there's something in the nigerian constitution that i don't think women I don't know if women can, um, if you marry a Nigerian woman, you can get citizenship. I don't think you can do that. Yeah, please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think you can do that. Just if you marry a British woman, you are entitled to citizenship after you've been married for, I think, five years or six years. You're entitled to it, but it doesn't work like that in Nigeria. So I think there are some clause, like, some funny thing. So anyway, I and my husband, we signed that. Please check this information as well that I'm giving. So we signed that and we printed that out. Now, the documents to carry along, they might ask you for the, if, since you already, on the form, I think that the part that says if they have any other citizenships, I did indicate that she was British. You need to carry the child's um, British passport along for sighting. You need to carry the letter that I said. You need to carry the original birth certificate of the child. So I also made sure I scanned and I made copies, photocopies in case they needed to collect anyone. So every document you're carrying, you need it. You also need to have a scanned copy printed out of both parents' data page of their passports. So your own Nigerian passport, your husband's Nigerian passport, you need to scan the data page and have it printed out and carry it along. Please do not forget this. You will be thoroughly harassed. Please, please, please. As I said, I'm going to put the list in the description box below every document that you need. So please read it carefully in case I'm skipping out anything. As you guys can see this video, I'm talking straight from my head, from my own experience from two weeks ago. So you need to print that out. Once you're done printing, that, printing it out, I want you to go on the government website and carefully read all the documents again and ensure that you have every single thing. As I said from the top, the application form, the accept um, payment acknowledgement slip, the payment receipt slip, the letter of consent from both parents, one document signed by both parents, your baby's international passport, your baby's data passport page signed, your own and your husband's data page signed. You also need your baby's original birth certificate. You also need something else which I'm going to talk about now. So because currently the Nigeria High Commission is not currently giving appointments, everybody is required to pay a £120 postal order. To the Nigeria High Commission postal order. So now you need to go to the post office. You need to go to your local post office. You're going to tell them you want to do a postal order to the Nigeria. No, there's no end behind though. Nigeria, it's all the details are also on their website. Nigeria High Commission, and then they're going to charge you a commission on top of that 120 pounds. So I ended up paying a hundred and thirty something pounds. I'll correct myself and I'll put it on this on the screen. I think I have a receipt for that. 130 i also put it in the description box so mind you you already paid i think 77 dollars or so on the innovate website for the appointment you still need to do a postal order of that amount and it's for fast track there's no fast track as at the time of this video they claim they resumed fast track but you still will not get it that day you will not get it the next day you'll probably get it in about a week or two so now that you have all your documents, you want to plan your commute to Northumberland Avenue, England, London, London, England. Now, you're going to have to go with a child and they're going to interview you for a first time passport. I strongly recommend you go there really early. The place opens, says online, they open by 9 o'clock, but they do not start to attend to people until 9.30. If you get there 9 o'clock, the queues will almost be reaching there's a university not too close not too far from there almost that side i got there 8 a.m sharp with my child i had traveled all the way from um glasgow i live in scotland i traveled to england i think 
left a day before don't go on that day don't play yourself if you're gonna i have to carry your child with you so i went with my child i went by air because i knew that i just couldn't put her through the commute of going five hours by train when is it like we're going to nigeria so i went by air that was a smooth journey my friend picked me up i went to her house i chilled i relaxed i had a bath we ate we gisted and we slept the next day i woke up super early by six o'clock i did not wear any makeup I just wore my dress, made sure that I was ready for war, <laughs> wore my pants, wore it to, I'll insert a picture of how I dressed, made sure my child was properly dressed for the cold, I carried a coat as well, put her socks because the weather is really cold at the moment and I knew we we're going to be on that queue for an hour plus, you know, so to make sure that she had a really nice thick puffer coat, I also had a coat as well, I made sure that my shirt was tied, then carry a small handbag and just your diaper bag in case your child is an infant like mine. So her diaper bag is really small. I put it at the bottom of her buggy, of her stroller, and then I had a uh, crossbody bag, just so that I knew that. And um, all my phones, my cards, my tissue paper. I mean, I just I have a video on my Instagram as well of why I keep in my small bags, and that's all I carried. Then the envelope. I said the envelope. Sorry. And then the folder. I got a folder that wasn't the ones that things can fall out of. Sealed folder that had all the documents inside. I put the passports inside my handbag, but I put every other thing, a birth certificate, everything inside the folder just for security reasons. And I put it in her stroller and we went all the way. Now, getting to Northumberland, I had to take, I think, a bus and I had to, for my friend's house, I had to take a bus and I also had to take a train. The train stations are not wheelchair accessible. So if your daughter can walk, you might just be better carrying her and walking. Let me see, she's like a five year old or like a seven year old. If you have it's a really small baby i suggest you carry a body wearer i carried my stroller because my daughter i don't I, my daughter is very active i don't want her running around the whole of england so i just made sure that i carry i had to carry the buggies down the stairwell down the underground myself i just my buggy is bigger but i just i carried i sent a picture and i carried it down and obviously i think at one of the stops someone helped me but I, I wish maybe my husband went with me and if you go with your spouse they won't let them in it's only one parent per child so it's a waste of commute and waste of journey anyway so it was just myself and my child that went to london and i carried the buggy down the road but you get it there it's in the shop it was really it was so cold make sure you carry enough snacks for your child Make sure you, as I said, keep them really warm. It was so cold. It was really early in the morning. The staff did not even begin to come until like 9 o'clock. The atmosphere was, when people on the queue were obviously discussing how not great Nigeria was. Me, I just kept to myself. I carried my AirPods. So I was listening to music. Uh, people already say, I mean, I'm behind you. I'm at your back. All of those conversations, you know. So I think around 9.30, some man that I hope if someone is in power is watching this video or has access to watch this video should please let the man have a reorientation we are citizens and i feel like we should be treated with dignity and respect the man was so like he was so you know like a power power drum let me see your document if you waste time he was just shouting everybody open your document make sure you bring your payment acknowledgement put it on top if it gets to your turn and let me say you're still sorting out your documents you'll just be shouting but i told you you know this one this one me, yeah, I was just like, in my heart, I was just so, I was more um, heartbroken than upset. I wasn't even upset. I was just like, like, who did we offend? But anyway, I digress. Let me carry on. So the guy will come. He will tell you to write your name and your address on the, on the, on the acknowledgement slip or whatever. They will give you the instructions at the end and they will not begin to tell you to go inside. Now, it was so cold. Like, this was like, I think I said I got there by 8, around 9.30, 9.40. I was still on the queue. My daughter started getting grumpy. The guy behind me now told me that, you know, you have a baby. Perhaps go to the front and tell them that you have a baby. Which, in a sane and productive environment, they will tell you that even on the plane when you want to board, they will say infants and nursing mothers go to the front. They will attend to you. Or even just to go inside. We don't want them to attend to us. Give us a tally number at 100 and whatever number I, I, I am. But let us go inside and have a seat. And... I went to the front to speak to the guy at the at the door. It's an older man, also equally very very. Those people act like I see no. They have there's something wrong. Anyway, I don't want to use any negative words on anybody. So the guy at the door, I was saying, excuse me, sir. You know, just hear the way I talk now. <laughs> excuse me, sir. If it's a goat to or a cow or a chicken that was talking to him, he didn't even flinch. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. 
Just say, your document, your document, not me. So I thought, you, ah. you guys, at this point, I was so emotional because my daughter was so cold, my eyes started getting red. The mom beside me said, She's talking to you now. As in, he started telling me, She's talking to you. Can't you answer? You can't say she has a baby. You know, the guy was, was so upset on my behalf. You know, I said, Please, 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 please. Oh, if I allow her to enter now, people in the queue will say that. I'm allowing her to jump the line. She should go and... Oh, well, that was not the choice of words you used anyway. It was like, I'm going to allow her to jump the queue. That she should go and be asking everybody on the queue. If they allow her to enter, then she can enter. The... Ah, you guys, at this point, do you know, I didn't even know. I just started crying. And I'm even saying, I mean, I'm very... I just started crying tears because no one has raised their voice of me. And not even from a place of, let me say, nobody can shout at me. But I was like, what did I do? Because I said, excuse me, sir. But obviously he figured because I had a pram and I just started crying. The guy, the guy beside me said, why are you crying? Don't cry! Don't cry! That's what he wants. They want you to be begging them and you are not going to beg them. The man just carried my daughter's stroller and just pushed me inside. That's how I entered with you guys. The guy just, the, this lovely man that was trying to be my defender, just carried my daughter's stroller and said, go upstairs. Just pushed me inside. Ah, that's how I entered. I got inside. I went to go and sit down. First, I want to clean my tears first because I'm. Uh, <laughs> bruh. <laughs> I was going to clean my tears first. I had to sit down. The man that one man now came, the same man, the one that was checking documents from outside, not the one at the door, the one that was checking documents, now came inside and said, you know, that I should go into one in our room and go and sit down there because it's fresh passports. I go into the room, there was nobody there. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm paranoid. I just carried my stroller back and I asked one that please, where are you? She said, no, that I'm supposed to sit down there, that the man has not even come. The person was supposed to attend to me and not come. Ah, you guys, apparently I was supposed to pick a tally number at the door when I came in. But because there was no signs, no instructions, only people, I mean, it's been a while. I've been, maybe last time I was there was maybe how many years ago now since I had my passport. I don't remember. So I went inside and... I was just sitting down. I just saw that when people were coming in, they were picking tally numbers. Hey, good. So I had to go. I picked up a tally number. One young man that was walking behind the glass, maybe he just pitied me and just saw the way I was just like, I was just like this. He now came from behind the glass. He now said, I should come. He now said, what do I need? And I told him that, you know, my fresh passport. He now said, okay, you know what? I should actually go to the interview room and they need to interview me because I'm claiming that my child is Nigerian and all of that. So I went to the interview room, I was in the queue, there were just two people in front of me, luckily. And the lady was very pleasant. She was probably the nicest person in that entire building. Extremely pleasant. So I got inside, she was like, can I have a document? She was so, she just loved my daughter. She was like, oh my God, cute baby. She was just so kind. Immediately she took sweets from her table and she offered them. Me, I don't like my baby taking sweet things. But obviously, I, at that point, I just kept my mouth shut, you know. My baby was already going to play with her, my daughter, because she can walk, she was already going to play with her. The lady was like, okay, can I see your document? So now I said, she now said, oh, where are you from? She asked me, I told her. She now said, what state? I told her. She was like, oh, apparently she's also from the same state. So that was very nice. She asked me some questions that I know about the place. And I said, yes, she said, okay, she just took my document and told me that I should go upstairs. You guys, I was even thinking that, okay, maybe she'll help me fast track or maybe she's not saying. Anyway, we went upstairs, I sat down, another pool of human beings that, people that they attended to before me. I waited for, let me see, another 40 minutes. That's why my daughter's name is Isla. So one man comes out with a document, with documents. He puts, he, so like, you have to just be very attentive there upstairs. Different people were just coming in, they were just shouting in. Gineko, Tola, Mili, Mili, if they call your name, that means it's time for you to go and take your pictures and maybe your thumbprints as an adult. I thought they were just shouting, Alia, Alia. I said, who be Alia? My daughter's name is Ayla. <laughs> like, Alia, Alia. They called my last name. Alia, my husband's last name. Alia. I just stood up. I said, nah, me. And I said, Alia. I said, eh, it's Alia. Whatever. Let me just, let's just get on with it. So we went inside. Oh, yeah, now to stand my baby's picture. So I, I told me to put her on my thigh. They cross checked the documents. And then they just told her to stay. They got it, huh? Managed to snap one photo and then he snapped it and he asked me if he was. I said, See, what at this point, whatever, like it's good. He now told me to cross check her name to ensure that everything was correct and there was no errors. And he was also pleasant, actually, he was quite pleasant. And we were done. So he told me to go outside and go and put my documents in a silver envelope. Now, I 
got the postal order but i didn't buy the special delivery envelope that you needed to send the documents back oh i was so flabbergasted and i asked the guy that where can i get from and i said i should go back outside and go and buy i just saw that some people were holding theirs and i noticed that they did not have earned so i asked them where did you get them from they were like oh that the lady at the till or somebody somebody some there sha was selling but apparently i think he was coy i don't think she was really allowed to sell i'm not sure but anyway so I asked her, I said, please can I have a, uh, an envelope? Me, I don't know, I just asked her. She just said, no, that she cannot have. She was just speaking Igbo to me. I'm like, I don't understand Igbo. I don't know if I look Igbo, I don't understand Igbo, I'm Yoruba. What is, can I have the, 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 the envelope? And she said, no, that something about, she just said it, in, but I couldn't understand what she was saying, that something about like, I needed to pay for it and everything. And I'm like, I don't have any cash on me. She just said, well, that's on me. You guys, you know, I had to go back outside. I should have found a way, went back outside, was looking for cash machine. Luckily, there was a Tesco there. So don't be like me. Make sure you go your get your envelope before you come to the place, your special delivery envelope. I think it's about £7.60 from the post office. But if you buy it in there, you're going to pay, I think, £10 cash. So I was able to get the envelope and then you asked me to snap the documents. And I did. Now, this was already around 11 o'clock. Mind you, I got this since 8. I was able to snap the, the, the they told me to snap document just for my records and then they put everything inside and said I should expect my passport December 7th. So that's three weeks after paying £120. Me, I didn't even care if it comes in January. I'm just like, I just I'm done. So I asked, I said, I said, um, are you done? Am I done? They said, yes, I was done. By this point, my baby was so tired. I just carried a kaya, a diaper. I had not changed a diaper. And you know, if you have a baby now, you, want, you don't want your baby to diaper to be soiled. Although, to be honest, if my daughter could speak clearly, I'm sure she would have had, she had a field day. When we were waiting at the biometric place, she was just playing people's children. She was just running up and down. She was so happy. In fact, I now wish I had those telephone wire ropes that if she just run, I just pull her back. No, but I just had to let her be. For me, even myself, I was exhausted after waking up since like 6 in the morning. So once we left, I went straight to McDonald's, just down the road. Went to the bathroom. I asked for the wheelchair accessible bathroom. I changed her diaper. I ordered for food. We ate. I charged my phone, sat down for like, I think, good one hour, just resting my mental head, did some work, because I have emails, I have work, and then I now took the train back to my house, carrying my buggy again. Okay, I think some guy helped me when I got to the next train station, and I went back to my house. So that's really my experience at the Nigerian High Commission. Now, my advice is that I feel like the process itself is not long. It's just the queuing, the tally numbers, the ticketing, the biometric, how messy everything is, that's actually what makes it very daunting. What they could easily do is maybe commission it to local post office so we can just take our pictures in Glasgow without needing to travel and then they just send like my daughter's British passport. It literally took how many days? I did not even under a week the thing was here. We'd not need to go anywhere. I just filled the form online, sent my documents, and that was it. You know? But our people may God help us so that's really how my process was so as I said you know just the point is, as I said go prepared you know buy everything make sure you pay for everything don't stress go there with a mindset that even if they're going to stress me I'm going to keep my cool don't be a baby like me me any small thing I was just my eyes I just started like God you know when I was going going back home on the commute back to my friend's house I was just like thinking like I was thinking from a place of governance like bad governance not even about the people there it's just a ripple effect of bad governance and my friend even told me that I was very lucky because my friend I was staying actually went to renew her own password. She got there by 8, she left by 2 p.m. I still left by 11. So she said that was really good, which is still horrible for me. But that was the process. So I really wish you all the best with your first time Nigerian passport for your child. And I hope that you don't experience stress. And I hope that um, everything goes well for you. So please, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the description box below. I hope that you please first read the description box box please read the description box before you ask questions that i probably might already answer in this video so that's about it yeah oh yeah before i go guys i'm entering a competition for my business my general trust the code of uk and in hair and beauty we stand a chance to win ten thousand pounds on the fedex small business grant people's choice award i would leave a link in the description box below please do vote for me if 5,000 people watch this video and all 5,000 people vote for me. It would mean so much to me to win this money. It's going to help my business to increase the capacity, to be more productive, and to just make some of my dreams come true. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy. And yeah, don't forget to vote for me. Until next time, stay blessed. Bye-bye.